cracking YouTube. Boy Nick, Big Dog's got to eat fantasy football today. Me and my friends have a league meeting that we always do about midway through the summer, so it's July 19th. We just discuss changes or rules that we want to make for the next season. And I have, you know, as the commish, I got to come strapped with all the questions and suggestions and shit. Otherwise, nothing gets done. If any of you guys are commissioners of your league, you know you got to be a dictator. We like to increase the buy-in every year. We talk about the league punishment, how we're going to pick the draft order, any scoring changes, rule changes, keepers. You know, if we want to do increase PPR, increase any special scoring, if I feel like kicking anyone out the league. So just stuff like that. Something I suggest if you kind of want to push your league to the next level, you got to have at least a meeting. If not, get like group me, the app or something so you guys can keep uh, in contact all the time. These are all people from my hometown. We all, we all went to the same high school. We all know each other. It's really easy for us to get together because we live real close to each other. Kind of wanted to give you guys a behind the scenes of how it goes down. So that's what we're doing this episode. Seven out of nine. The meeting starts at nine. I tell everyone eight thirty because if you say half hour early, people still come half hour late. Thus, you're on time still. Let the meeting adjourn. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out first because I think it's the most drastic change we can make to the league. The more I like kind of read into, it, the more I think about it, I kind of want to do a dynasty league. Draft a bigger a bigger roster from scratch. Like we'd start the dynasty this year. You keep basically all your players. So you draft like uh, 22 people in the draft, right? And then at the end of the year you cut your roster down to I think it's like 15 or 16 people and then the following year you keep the 15 or 16 people on your team and then you just do a rookie and a free agency draft. You're a GM of your team basically. I'm not opposed to the dynasty but I also... I know it's a drastic change but like we've been well, in the league for so long we never really... Draft day is like my favorite, favorite day of the year. I, now I agree really, but it really all, affect I, my uh, love for it. It also like makes the offseason way more interesting. Basically you're drafting like a quarterback for like your rest of your fantasy. It's like imagine you know how like NFL teams have to cut their roster down to 53? It's like that, you gotta cut your roster down to 60. And our first pick. Yeah. So, I'll start off the vote. I am in favor of starting a dynasty this year. I'm going, George. I'm going hell no. I still even know it's no, hell no. I'm, no, I'm going a slight no. What's no? No. Yes. Slight no. Okay. That's it. No, di no dynasty. We'll try again next year. Anyone in favor of a two quarterback league? I think the way we have it set up right now. I've been yes. there before. That's why. You must have been in some shitty ass league. League. You know, definitely league. better than football is in the NFL right now. Quarterback is like the most important position. The Absolutely. way we have it set up, it's the least fucking important position in our fantasy. Just right. change it to six point passing touchdowns. Looks like we're leaning more towards six point pass touchdowns. Yeah, yeah. 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 We got four yeses. No. We voted the one new member, so at least we can call them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay, listen, you're in the league, and we need your input on this before we vote anymore. Please. All right, this is another weird, interesting rule that I actually heard the other day. I think they do it on Yahoo. Point instead of PPR, point per first down. Hey, time out. So you're telling me if it's third and one, my running back runs the ball two yards. It's the same thing as a, as a running back catching a negative two yard pass and getting a point for it. Like, how is that? Three. On three, we're gonna put our. This is absurd. Not go. On three. <laughs> One. Deciding how many keepers we want to use. Great. Oh, you oh, you ah. <laughs> One keeper, baby. All right, get rid of kicker. Yes. No. I love yes. kickers. Yes. No. Whoa, whoa, we got three. Yes. Wait, no, no, we're going around no, no, circles. No, no, no. Hold your applause. Yes, get rid of kickers. Yes. No. no. Hold no. it, motherfucker. It's not part of the game. No kickers. It's yes. fucking yeah, irrelevant. I do want kickers. It's irrelevant. No. Two two. Kickers win games. Two three. Keeping kickers. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> Is everybody who got burned by a fucking kicker last year probably was hoping no. I just think kickers win down. Super Bowls, guys. They take burns just true. But from what George yeah. is saying, I get that too. It takes out of the takes away from the head to head spot. But it doesn't take it completely away. It only takes away from the fourth spot. Yeah. At that point you're not that fucking good. It opens up a whole new element of What if you don't be late? I wanted to see head to head. You could be in seventh place. He wanted on the shot. I did. People will still set their lineups. I agree. Try to. All right, so that's the proposal. Leave the fourth spot open, open for the best, best the most amount of points from four to ten. I say yes on that. No, I like it. Yes. That was actually one of the more productive meetings we've ever had with our league. Usually, it's just people not paying attention and shit, and they're just yelling at each other. We got a lot of rule changes done, actually, though. First thing we did was do something with the quarterbacks because the way I figure it, like the quarterback is the most important position in football right now. But when you're playing in a 10-team standard league, four points per passing touchdown, the position pretty much comes irrelevant. So we wanted to do something that kind of changed it up and made them more important. So uh, I proposed two-quarterback league. That got voted down. But 
we are doing six points per passing touchdown. So I know I've talked about how I think Drew Brees is overvalued this year. I picked him last year in the 10th round, which means I can keep him this year for a ninth round pick. So I'm getting Brees at the ninth round for a six point per pass touchdown league. So I'm kind of pumped up about that rule change. Another interesting rule change that we made was we're keeping it half point PPR. We've always had it half point PPR, which is great. I think that's easily the way to go if you're deciding between regular and full PPR, definitely go half point. We're adding in half point per first down. They allow you to do that if you play on Yahoo. I know that's an option. It's probably an option on the other sites as well. And basically what it does, it's the same way that like, if you do standard league, right? You basically narrow down a lot of running backs that that have no value anymore, right? Like a CJ Pro size would have no value in a standard league. Making something half PPR or PPR gives more, uh, gives the pool of picks more value, right? There's a lot more running backs that you can pick that, that could help your team. I think that's, a, that's the same thing with the half point per first down. I think, I'm hoping, like I'm hoping that this doesn't like mess shit up, right? Because now if you were looking, I made my, my Saints video yesterday, my Saints outlook, and I was saying that I would definitely take Ingram over Peterson, but now, since half point for first down is just as valuable as half point for PPR, Adrian Peterson might be more valuable to me in that backfield now. I'm gonna have to look into the whole half point per first down thing. It's an interesting little tweak. Maybe a quarter point for first down would have been better. I don't really know, but well, you know, we're just testing. We like to try new things out and kind of change the league settings to see how we like it. And then next year, we could always change it back. What else did we do? So we play in a keeper league, and the rule is this. If the player was drafted in the 10th round or later, you're able to keep him and you lose the round ahead of him. So if someone drafts Michael Thomas, like for instance, someone gets to keep Michael Thomas this year because he was he was picked in the 10th round, so you'll lose your ninth round pick this year. We don't do free agents. If he, if he was a free agent, he wasn't drafted, you're not allowed to keep him. Um, we moved that up to the eighth round. So a lot more players are in the pool. Set of two, we knocked it down to one. I tried to eliminate the damn kicker position. Got voted down. We upped the buy-in. We had two new members coming in the league. Also, this is, an, this is another cool change. So instead of, we, we're in a 10-team league, so four teams make the playoffs. And then, you know, normally it's just like whoever, it's head-to-head -head leagues, head-to-head uh, -head matchups throughout the year, whoever has the four best records. This year we're doing the three best records. And then for the fourth spot in the playoffs, it's not whoever had the fourth best record. It's out of those remaining teams from four to 10, whoever had the most points. Because you know a lot of people get screwed. You could end up in seventh place but have the most points in the league, right? So that's a way to make sure that that doesn't happen. So the fourth spot is for whoever has the most points in the league that wasn't in the top three record-wise, which is cool. Um, for deciding our draft order, we're gonna do a beer pong tournament. The way we do it is like, we don't do something like a, you know, it, the, whoever wins in the competition gets the first pick. It's like, if you win whatever the competition for, um, your draft order is like you get to pick whatever spot you want not like oh i won like the draft order competition i get first pick and then you got second place you get second pick it's like if i want if i won and i want the sixth pick i get first dibs at whatever pick i want so i suggest doing that because like first pick is not always a reward our payouts this year so we do a 300 dollars buy-in each person so that comes out to a three thousand dollar pot we're all 22, 23, 24, 25 years old, so that might not sound like a lot to some of you guys. It might sound like a lot to others, uh, but that's where we're at right now. We increase it every year. So we do 2,200 to the first place first place winner, 600 to the second place, and then $100 for the most points in the regular season, $100 to the best record in the regular season. And those are the rule changes we made. And then I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna put on, we always discuss our league punishment, because as you know, we do the league punishment if you missed it. You can go watch my vlog from, you'll see stand-up comedy vlog. That was a punishment needed to go into New York City, do a five minute stand-up comedy routine. So this year we're looking to top that. And I'm gonna put up the list of our finalists. We discuss it, we talk about it, we narrow it down and eventually get to which one we wanna do. So you can check them out right here. And the call in a bomb threat is a joke. It's not serious. We'll never actually do that, so relax. My favorite thing is you have to act as a Jehovah's Witness and walk door to door. You don't actually have to convert three people. I think that'd be hilarious. The calendar shoot's pretty played out. I feel like everyone in fantasy does that. Frosted blonde hair tips. Imagine you have to go blonde tips for like a night out. That's, it doesn't have to be New Year's Eve, but like a night, a night that we all go out, it'd be great. The only problem is we have like three people in our league who are blonde and you wouldn't really tell. And then the other half of the league has girlfriends, so it's not like they would really care 
it would be like three people in the league that needed to do the blonde tips and it would actually be really funny. Be a bathroom attendant in a bar for a night. That's epic. <laughs> you just go in there with like napkins and have to stand there for like hours. So that's our list and that's really, that's gonna wrap up this video. So I just wanted to kind of give you guys an insight because a lot of a lot of people throughout the summer ask when, when our live draft is. We've always done the draft in one of my league members, his aunt like owns a law firm, so she lets us go in there and, and use the war room, but one of my buddies just moved into a new house. They just redid the basement, it's really nice, and he wants to host us for the draft, which is awesome, so we're moving there. And our draft is always, always, always on Labor Day Monday. We found that that works perfectly. It's never, it's never been a problem because everyone's obviously off of work. You're done with the weekend. You know, you party all Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Everyone's home by Monday. So if you're looking for a way to like make sure that you guys can all get there, it's always Labor Day Monday always works. So that's that, and I uh, hope you all enjoy this video. Whenever we do, if we have our next meeting or whenever we do our beer pong draft tournament uh, for the draft order, I'll make sure to film that too. So.